Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back this Saturday morning, 11.54 a.m. Eastern Time, uh, Eastern Standard Time Zone here in Atlanta, Georgia. Yes, it's going to be a hot one. It's going to be a hot one today. But I just wanted to come back on the tube, the YouTube, on my platform, Deb Chanel's 48th World, to tell you what all the buzz is about. What's trending on YouTube, what's trending on Facebook, Instagram, um, social media, period, and even Twitter. Okay, did I forget YouTube? All right, you know, YouTube is always ablaze with something or another. And social media platforms throughout the world globally are carrying the information. But mostly we get it from YouTube, okay? And like I said, the other platforms, uh, different blogs, different uh, commentaries, uh, advertising type, journalistic blogs here and there. But we got one from, uh, I think it's called the Deadline, just as it sounds, Deadline, L-I-N-E dot com. Must be a new uh, informative journalistic commentary article that's being advertised to us now. You know, basically, they brought out a story talking about Miss Janelle Evans. Yes, she's the hot topic for today. We're talking about and her husband and the shooting of their family dog. I mean, what is going on? Firearms are used to protect and serve. Protect and serve. Not serve it up on a little dog. Now, if the dog was running around there being rabbit, bone coming out the mouth, yes, it's time to put the little fella, you know, down. Okay? Euthanasia is a good thing when you got somebody that's infected and they have no way of surviving the episode. Yes, put them to rest. But this gentleman decided to take out the family dog because I think it was agitating or growling or being very uh, vicious towards the little girl. And he saw the dog as a threat. That little bit of dog, okay. Mm. Be careful when you go and select these dogs. You're adopting these dogs from these shelters or you're going to a breeder paying all this money and then you want to take the dog out because you feel, you feel that the dog is being disrespectful and warranted as a threat to the family and the children. Okay, now I said my piece on that and I'm going to say this. Sometimes people get tired and they see what they want to see and it may not be the right way of viewing it. You know, the, the brain is very powerful. It, it, it can trick you in many, many ways. Now, did we ascertain or did we look into it uh, fully before the non-rabbit dog Allegedly, I'm thinking, uh, attacked the children in some way or became vicious towards their children because children are something else, too. They love to pick, probe, and, and, and do ungodly things to creatures such as dogs. You know, dogs have feelings, too. They bleed red blood just like us. OK, they're human. So if the children were at fault where they were just picking at the dog and and, and, and agitating the dog. Of course, the dog is going to, you know, fend for themselves, fight or fight. They have the same mentality as humans do. They're going to uh, growl. They're going to uh, make noise, showing that this person is not being very nice to them and all of that. Because I, I can speak from experience. I had a Pomeranian, had bought a, a brand new Pomeranian that was breeded by, I um, can't think of the person's name now, but beautiful dog. Bought it for my daughter. So I think fourth or fifth birthday. And just loving. She always said she wanted a black dog, wanted to be a boy, and just small for her age to grow up with her. Because she didn't have many friends, you know, kind of a little shelter child here and there. But you can't trust everybody around your children. You can't put your children around everybody else. You know what I'm saying? You got to be very selective. So, got her a dog and everything. Everything was fine. And then, like, maybe a couple of weeks or maybe a month after I got the dog, the dog just became really vicious towards her. Fine with me, mama, uncle, anybody else that comes to the house. But when it came to my daughter, uh, calling herself being gentle and nice and kind to the dog, dog always wanted to get on her. I always wanted to growl that I was ready to attack. Okay. Now, shortly after, you know, getting the dog and everything and me watching it, and, you know, my mom like, I don't think you need to keep that dog, but the dog don't like her. I'm like, okay, 
you know, I, I know how my child gets down sometimes. So I was going to ask, what would you do to the dog? You know what I'm saying? Did you do anything mean to the dog? Of course, she said, no, 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 because she had this little nice thing going on. You know what I'm saying? But we all have two sides to us, a good side and a bad side. And it grows on with us, and we just have to make sure we suppress the bad side when we, we're thinking evil or doing evil things towards people or whatnot. Or maybe to ourselves. I don't know. But um, we have that bad and good people in us okay person that we could turn it off and turn it on depending on how we're feeling at the time or if we enraged at the time you know what i'm saying so uh basically you know i started a business out of the house and it was um uh, inside home daycare i was doing uh wanted to be an entrepreneur wanted to see how far i could go because my goal was to actually get a building uh outside of the home but i wanted to see could i actually do it so I had started that business and I knew, you know, with the inside out, you know, there's certain people that don't like their children around animals. So they could be allergic to animals or whatnot. So I was like, OK, I got to make a try. I got to find him another home and uh, a good home or whatever. And, you know, we just need to get him set up because it's not fair that I didn't think about this ahead of time and really ahead of time before I paid all that doggone money and we talking about fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars okay so I wanted to find a um the um baby dog it was called Shelby a uh, good home so I eventually got that got the daycare started and things of that nature so I uh, initially bought a lot of stuff for the kids to play out in the uh, outside because they needed their fresh air and they didn't need to be cooped up in the house or a building. They needed to explore the outside. So, you know, we had a lot of little cute things outside for them to uh, play on and all that. And then one day my daughter came home and she was out there with the kids because it was out time, outdoor time at the time. And, uh, you know, parents don't come get their children until later on in the evening hours and she's already back home from school. And this child sat up there, and she was talking about, Mom, I want another dog. I said, that ain't going to happen, not no time soon. Maybe when you get in high school, but I, because I need more help. You didn't give me more help when the dog was here, and I had to, you know, that money I wasted on the dog, and we don't even have a dog no more. She said, yeah, but I don't want a Pomeranian no more. I want something. I like, I don't even know why we're having this conversation, because you didn't get another dog. So, you know, we just went on and on and on about that. And then she said, Mom, you know, that dog got on my nerve one day, and I threw that dog up in the air, and I let it hit the cement. And I was like, say what? You know, and, you know, I waited till, you know, the kids went home and everything, and I had a, a real hard conversation with my daughter. That in, in, entailed a whipping, and I was just letting her know, you can't treat animals the way you think you should treat them when you get angry, or they in your way, or you don't want to be bothered with them. And, you know, you just want to do evil craziness stuff like that and i told her that was just very uh rude and vicious and you know that's that's not inhumane you know so she kind of got the gist of it and as she grew older you know she apologized she apologized at the time when she confessed to me but it would have been nice to know she had did this to this puppy so i could have regulated her in front of the puppy and maybe they could have built uh, or got back to a, a, a what do you call it a mutual understanding with each other you know what i'm saying but right you know when kids are young they are just into themselves they self-lovers of sales and it's okay at that time but you gotta learn how to shell and be um what do you call it um warm and inviting people into their circle of existence you know what i'm saying they can't go and just be oh it's me 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 it's i i i know that no the world is made up of teams groups and you have to interact with people okay you just can't have your space unless you're in your own house doing your own thing and then you can do it but you still gonna have people come and interrupt you want to see what you want what you're doing where you at can they be with you you know what i'm saying interaction and, and it's a good thing and social media has definitely taken over that where we're so invested in our phones our tablets computers where we forget how to just sit and have a normal conversation and put the phone away because back in the day in the 60s 50s 60s 70s only thing you had was a, a a landline phone and then you used to have to fuss and fight with folks that like to talk like you do and have conversations because you wanted your time on the phone but it's just way up this is where it is i was back there with the rotary dial phones honey we didn't have a uh, hold and click and all like that and when it did came out and you didn't have that man you felt like you you was a book i mean you were very six feet on the you were just cut off from society and the interaction you just had to beg your parents to get 
you know, the call waiting and you know, upgrade their rotary dial phone to, you know, and then the, the stationary phones that you just hang on the wall and stuff. Now nah, we need somewhere where we go cordless and all that. So, you know, the phone things has always been messed up and we're still at it today. We're, you know, buying into all these different phones and this, that, and the third. But I just said that to say this. Sometimes when you got little kids or you got kids, period, you got to check your kids just like you check your dog. Feelings are going on, emotions are going on, and they get high tempered sometimes. So you got to see who is being the aggressor and who is being the aggressive. You know, you know what I'm saying? So in my case, it was my daughter doing wrong that made the dog form a uh, unlikeful uh uh, connectability with her and it was because of her she had mistreated him on probably several occasions not just that one time because she only gonna tell him about one she gonna get to give him a whole boat boatload of stuff which boatload of stuff that she did to the dog you know what i'm saying because she know that's gonna be plenty of ass whoopings you know for each infraction okay but you know sometimes we overlook that part and we just go straight for what we think is the the, the case and we misjudge and um, we um give the wrong definitive answer onto something we should investigate a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm pretty sure them kids did something. Or that that daughter did something to that dog to make that dog not like her. Dogs are not geared to just be aggressive towards somebody unless they have that feeling. They don't think that person is nice, and and, and they feel threatened. That's the only thing. And a lot of people uh get the misunderstanding of why people take their teeth, uh, the dog's teeth out of their mouths. Sometimes the only time that I really think you should is when you're not keeping up with their uh, general hygiene when it comes to brushing their teeth and make sure you take them to the dog to get them clean. This and third. They can have a deadly odor in their mouths from the cavities that have built or the plaque um, that has come around uh, over several uh, stages of the dog. And, you know, just Poor grooming when it comes to their uh, teeth. You got to take them jokers out because the teeth are hurting their dog, their gums, and it's just too much infection. And, and it's, and it's uh, harming the dog's immune system as well as their insides because all that, you know, what do you call it, bacteria and disease is going into their system and it's affecting them. So that is one of the needs where you need to pull out your dog's teeth out if that is the case. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, that's just poor uh, hygiene habits. Then the second thing is is when your dog is kind of aggressive and they uh, bite or tend to be very, very aggressive when it comes to bathing time, feeding time, or just interaction time. And they just want to snap all the time at the owner. And there's no justification for it. You know what I'm saying? I've heard and my vet has told me those are, uh, are types of times where they pull all the dog's teeth out as well. And, you know, they can still gum now. They can still gum you down, but it's not as bad. Uh, and then it's not, a, it, they don't pose a threat, especially if they're house dogs to people that come in and they may snap at them. At least they just got gums. They, you know, like, you ain't going to be doing too much or break the skin when somebody's gumming on you. You know what I'm saying? Versus when they have sharp teeth and they're clawing into your flesh, in a sense. So you got to look at all of that. Those are two ways that I have come across uh that you can pull a dog's teeth so just putting that out there educate your fellow dog owners or people that don't know about dogs there's several ways you can disarm a dog and not have to like put them to death you know what i'm saying i'll put them out uh in another reality of existing just don't you do that that's just like you harming a, a an adult or a child or human being pets are human too if they bleed red blood okay then they're human. If you have to treat these dogs just like you treat yourselves, like getting them vaccinated, making sure they're well groomed, uh, giving them certain medications. Shit, some of my, one of my dogs had to take uh, some uh, antibiotic medicine because he had to get uh, a place where he injured himself and they had to do a little minor surgery and they gave him uh, medicines, uh, pill forms. He was taking some of the uh, trauma doll is the uh, pill that I'm talking about referring to. He was taking ground fault medicine that we get as grown people. You know what I'm saying? Humans. He was taking medication like that. And then he had, he's um, suffered from allergies. Yeah, they take allergy medicine as well. So I'm like, mm -mm. 
the law needs to change. We need to have them on our income taxes. Okay, income taxes, because we spend too much on their grooming, their health care, uh, their well-being, that they don't, you know, we need, they not children. We need to be able to claim them, okay? But it just is what it is. That was my spill of different ways. This situation could have been taken and handled so differently before picking, picking up a weapon and trying to let peace be still. You know what I'm saying? Because whenever time you pick up an AK-47 uh, or Colt 45 or BB gun, uh, who, what can I say? And it's a Beretta. Uh, a Glock, and you might got some military for way back in the day. They used to like those old Civil War guns, hey, a rifle, a Winchester, you know what I'm saying? M16. You start pulling out firepower like that, you better be ready to answer to those uh situations, and you better be a licensed carrying toted um uh gun owner, you know what I'm saying, and know how to use that. Uh, gun as well because I'm telling you the law make you they say protect and serve but you got to kind of petition yourself to, to tell them why you got to have some justification on why you picked up that gun and you decided to take a matters into your own hands and end a life you know what I'm saying whether it's a human life or a dog life don't matter it was a life and you got to be dotting your eyes and crossing your T's because they'll be ready to say okay uh, did they really pose a threat? Did something actually happen to make you warrant picking up that gun, releasing that safety trigger, pulling it, and ending that dog's life? They start putting you on the interrogation seat, okay? Putting you up on front street trying to get you to confess to doing something wrong or to make them understand why you did the deed that you did, okay? So you got to be a lot of justification and a lot of proof before they let you go and say, okay, we release you from this. It was justification for your actions. Okay, we will let you go. Okay, but don't think that infraction ain't written somewhere, somewhere where somebody can pull it. And if this incident happened again, they'll bring that issue up on you. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. It's starting to be a pattern with you and these dogs running around here. But that was just my little spiel. I had to get on out my opinion, and I just wanted to express it. So I'm sorry that it took a little longer, but let's get into this commentary that Dead Insider wrote up on Miss Janelle Evans. Yes, she was a teen mom. And like I tell you, sometimes when these children get these TV shows and their parents aren't very well involved with this decision, a lot, a lot of things can happen. You know, they can get TV exposures, like they say, bit by the entertainment bug. And they start doing, saying, and presenting themselves in unflattering ways. Okay, unflattering ways. And I don't know if it was just too much for uh, Janelle's husband, David Easton, to where he just fell out of the contact with reality and started being in some, I don't know, haze zone. Or he just disconnected with the world and the laws of our world that we exist in, you know, our society. So, I, I don't know. I can take the story several different ways, you know, but I'm just going to say brother was burnt out because you can see in some of these photos that I put in the, uh, my clip for my video to uh, explain what I was talking about, about this particular subject. He was changing. He was metamorphosizing just in front of us. He started looking like a clean cut, born bred American citizen and, um, you know, well known in the community, doing a good thing, trying to live life like most of us down here doing the uh, correct way or the way that society expects us expects us to act. You know, he just started changing, started looking like a crazed mountain man that hadn't been dealing with or interacting with anybody as far as civilization. You know what I'm saying? Like they just cut off from the world and they just start living a cave-like type mentality. They get away from all of uh, foreign things. Or oh, they seem they're foreign to them now. And they just go back living like they're on a rule or uh, lifestyle of living. You know, no phones, no electricity, no, oh, we got to have running water, but maybe not all the time. I, you know, I don't know how these people did it back in the day. You know, that primitive type living is what I'm saying, primitive. 
So, and it seems just like that's how he was trained. So, I, I don't know, switching with guns and all this kind of crap. I mean, somebody really should have been getting him some help. And I'm talking about family. Family, this isn't the time where we get in there and we do this, invent, what we call an intervention. All right. The signs were there. Okay. I'm sure the signs were there, but nobody took a, amongst themselves to get these little folks off TV and say, okay, we need some therapy. We need some intervention time. Then y'all can go back to this reality world of living and this and that. Thing. But we, we need to get this situation straight now. Because I'm sure, like I said, it was some telltale signs before this incident even came up. Uh, with, you know, taking out the dog in a sense. But let's go into the article. It said, um, it was written by Denise uh, Piteski, Piteski uh, from Deadline.com. Breaking news, okay? Uh Team Mom 2, MTV cut ties with Janelle Evans. And this is the reason why. Janelle Evans is no longer a cast member of Team Mom 2. MTV cut all ties with Evans after it was revealed that her husband, David Easton, killed the family dog. Okay? That's not, uh, <laughs> that, that's not advertiser friendly. That's not look, making you look, a, 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 you know, Look good in the eyes of society because, you know, they always paint this picture as a true blood American. You know, it doesn't matter what race or culture you're in. But, you know, it's the whole thing about, you know, getting out there, doing what you need to do to be the best citizen you can be for the world. So you can implement that shine and make other people want to follow suit. You know, the big picket, the white picket fits, the big old house, the doll, the family, you know, unit and everything going cool and just expressing life. To be lived that way. But he done took out the dog. That means the family done broke up somewhere. It's just a, it's a totally chaos situation. Everything is in disarray. In other words. So uh, yeah. MTV said that's not a good look. <laughs> we we trying to promote family here. And when you taking out the family dog. That, that's just not going to work for us. So we got to sever all ties with you. And you know maybe if you serve our ties with him and you, you're doing things positive in the community, we might can link up later on down the road in the future. I don't know. Don't hold me to it. But for now, no, nah, we got to cut ties. <laughs> and that's just where the industry, the entertainment industry rolls. If you put them in a bad light, they got to cut ties real quick, fast, in a hurry. All right. No second, no second chances. All right. So that was my commentary, not in this article. Going back to the article, it says MTV ended its relationship with David Eason over a year ago in February 2018 and has not filmed any new episodes of Team Mom 2 with him since. So see, they kind of gave her a chance to, you know, they, they just call one party acting up. Don't mean, oh, just one individual is acting up. Don't mean we got to throw away the whole party. You know, we could film around him. OK, we don't need him. Single mom, that, 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 that looks good. Uh, that shows, you know dedication that shows you ain't gonna let your life go down the hills go south just because one entity or one individual is cutting up okay we could use this storyline we could use it so they cut david to the side and that probably made him a little angry too that's why so you got to watch who you cutting out your life too quickly okay and seeing if they good with the situation because they can come back and harm you you know in the future and that seemed like what's going on in this scenario of a situation Okay, but they said they cut ties with David in, two, in February 2018 and has not filmed with him since. Okay, then we got Team Mom uh, still, you know, being surrounded by Janelle and the kids. Uh, it says MT spokesperson said in a statement to Deadline. Additionally, we have stopped filming with Janelle Easton as of April 6th of 2019. Okay, that's when all the stuff was really popping off, uh, I guess, because David was mad. You know, the whole rest of the year of uh, 2018. So he said, I'm, I, I can't get no money. She ain't going to get no money. You know, kids ain't going to get no money. I'm like, okay, you destroyed yourself. Now you're trying to take down the whole family. See, that's a mess right there. That is a hot mess. And like I said, these are signs. Signs people just don't look at or want to look at because it ain't really affecting them at the time. But see, he had brewed over this situation. He had took a year before they said a year and a couple of months. February, April, May, month, February, March. Yeah, a couple of a year and a couple of months before he came back and started trying to destroy his wife and children. Okay. So it says, um, let me go back. It's a team on two with him since meaning they broke ties with David in 2018, February. Then it's that MTV spokesman said in a recent statement, we just cut ties with uh well stopped filming with Janelle Easton as of April 2019. 
and have and have no plans to cover her story in the upcoming seasons. So they pretty much pushed her to the side too, because it's making them look at a bad, you know, it's making their their company and what they're trying to still put out there for people to gravitate to are these teen moms, teen moms and these pregnancies. It's not making them look good. So they, of course they had to cut ties. Uh, going back to this uh, article that was written on Janelle, it says Evans and Easton share two-year-old daughter, Inslee. See photo of Janelle and Inslee above. And, you know, they gave you a little picture and all like that. Then it goes back to the article. It says teen mom, two, follows Chelsea, Caitlin, and Leah from second season of 16 and pregnant and documents the challenging responsibilities of being a young mother. Each episode offers a unique look into their lives while tackling a wild, wide wide variety of issues, obstacles, and celebratory milestones. Team Mom 2 is executive produced by Lauren uh, Dalgen, Morgan J. Freeman, Daya Sokol, Savage, Larry Mitznick, and Alicia Ellis. Morgan J. Freeman. I wonder if that's the act, the black actor. I gotta Google that and see. But anyway, it may not be. Maybe. We just never know. Okay? But it could be. And that commentary really ends there. But see, I don't even like the whole idea of this team on. Like I said, I might watched it a couple of, a few times when it was on, but it didn't show them in a very good light. You know, they could, they made X amount of dollars. And at the time when the show really started, they weren't giving them a lot of uh, compensation. You know, I'm pretty sure they gave them like baby products and stuff of that nature from sponsorships and all of that. But, uh, you know, they, it wasn't really a lot of money that they could depend on on a daily basis. So it was just showcasing their life of being pregnant, what they had to go through. And, you know, and to me, that's just, that's not reality life. Okay. You, you know, you need to be on your kids to say, no, nah, you got to do this. You got to do that. And if you want to do this reality spin off shit, you go into your apartment or do whatever. So they can see, really see you in the grind, but you're not going to be up in here taping in my house that I don't build and, and, and got with your dad or if this is a single mom doing it on thing. We ain't finna tape all this because I'm embarrassed that you set up him out of all the education that is out there. You found yourself in a situation where you still brought a baby into this world when there's so many contraceptives out there. So that's telling me a lot about you and what you didn't listen to when I was raising you. Okay. And telling you things that you shouldn't be doing to be in a situation that you are in now and thinking I'm supposed to be there every step of the way and not have feelings negative feelings toward this whole situation so uh i didn't like the whole idea of giving them glory and uh, a platform to be on when they shouldn't have had no platform to, to the beginning just stick to what is a known fact that is a known ingredient to get you to a, a positive situation where you can get out on your own and if they want to make a story on these young adults trying to do the thing and finding they struggle in everyday life and the situation that they may outside of their parents' homes, they didn't do that. That would be more pleasing of advertising to make me want to see how the, these young adults get down when they're trying to go to college, trying to get in the grind, trying to make it work, but yet they still are faced with these ob obstacles and seeing how they overcome them or not overcome them. You know what I'm saying? That would be more gravitating for me to watch than sitting up here watching these 14, 15, 16-year-olds out there having sex uh, with nearly unprotected. Uh, they're not even thinking about the diseases they get, even if they don't get a situation of pregnancy. You know, you got AIDS out there. You got syphilis out there. You know, you got gonorrhea out there. And some of these, uh, you know, these diseases are not curable. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or the government ain't put out a cure for it. They may have it locked up somewhere, but they're trying to do their studies and trying to see all these people being promiscuous and stuff and just, you know, just trying to go gather other stats for the negative before they bring out these positive drugs that they've been having as a cure, you know, forever. But they got to do the longevity of how it impacts the body over a period of time. You know what I'm saying? So, it is here what it is. But I feel sorry, but I don't feel sorry for this situation where uh, kids are thrown into a reality world and they're trying to sit there and, and sink, sink or swim. I mean, uh -uh. but I do feel sorry for the dog having to have to lose its life. Now, if it was rabbit or something like that, then, yeah, we need to euthanize them. We didn't necessarily have to shoot the dog, but we could have captured the dog, took them to a facility and let them quietly put them to sleep. You know what I'm saying? Versus you know, putting out a weapon 
uh, that's supposed to be used only for hunting. And I don't agree with hunting, you know, out there shooting animals just for the little bit of it and putting it over your mantelpiece as a prize. Now, I, I, now if it's a side for, for survival purposes, as far as, you know, eating and, you know, replenishing the body with nutrients and stuff, that's different. Uh, but I'm I'm kind of not even eating a lot of different meats no more. I'm I'm kind of being chicken and may even go to back being a vegetarian. I, I'm not sure because it's so much pesticides being sprayed also um, on our plant uh, based foods as well. So I mean, just yeah, what it is, you know, pray healthy food, but uh, hope for the best and move on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, the story was very interesting. It's trending on uh, social media platforms. So I just thought I'd talk about it. See what y'all think about it, you know? Could, could this have been avoided? Could we have gotten David some, uh, you know, some help along the way? You know, was it a situation where Janelle was playing him against another dude? You know, was it all about this dog and him shooting it? Was it other factors that weighed in that he just said, I have to have an outlet. I got to take this dog out. You know what I'm saying? What, what, what? It was other things that they're not telling us about this story. That for the ones that want to deep a little deeper, I'm just on the surface type person. I just break the news. I have my little commentary about it and I just let it go. Okay. But if anybody else want to just, you know, reprise the story, put in my comments, you know, find some new information, I'll come back and report on it. I sure will. I will do my due diligence and do that for you. But that was the hot topic that was trending uh for me because it was actually brought out in uh may 7 with some new updated versions because i think she was fighting for her children after this and i think she actually did win custody but i think david don't supposed to be nowhere around them fact checkers get out there and make sure i'm correct with that or correct me or whatever but it's a sad situation because like i said I, I just saw the pictures were changing uh that were being captured on this young fellow and it, it was kind of disturbing. So I'm like, if I saw it, I'm just not even really paying attention to your life except for this uh, video. Then I'm sure you had to see it, Janelle. I'm sure you had to see some surface things coming to fruition that you didn't like that was going on with your boyfriend, husband, or whoever he may be to you. Okay, or was to you. But I'm glad you got your kids back. I hope you can do better. You know better, so you should be able to do better. And... um. I wish nothing but blessings for you all uh, collectively, even David. He just made a bad decision. It's going to haunt him for the rest of his time on this earth. But, you know, this is what it is. But sometimes we got to look at our kids. We've got to see what they're doing to disturb the environment of an animal. You know what I'm saying? Versus saying the animal is being the aggressor. Okay? But it is. Kids may be the aggressee. I mean, aggressor. And the dog just may be the aggressee and, and trying to defend itself. You know what I'm saying? So I always think and do your due diligence before you make a decision and make the decision when you're at a calm state of mind and you're thinking all avenues and, and, and turning over all stones to make sure ain't nothing left that should have been told before the, the final decision is made. But all right, y'all. I'll see you soon again for another video. Yes, because there's always something trending hot out there in the entertainment world. And we just have to bring it to fruition. All right. But y'all have peace about yourself. Be blessed. And do right by each other. Okay. Don't think about self all the time. Do right by another individual that you don't even know. Okay. Talk to you soon for something else. Goodbye.